Okay, so we are at the New York Press Club Journalism Conference 2010, and we are excited to be here. We are with Mr. Dean Miller, who is going to explain to us where he's from, why he's here, and why this event is so important to us. So, my name is Dean Miller. I'm the director of the Center for News Literacy at Stony Brook University. And news literacy is an emerging field uh, that teaches students how to use critical thinking skills in their pursuit of reliable information for use in their civic lives for the most part. And so it's, it's not really a news criticism course, it's more a course of how-to for news consumers. And in giving your talk this morning, which was so engaging, and I mean, no, it really was. Everyone was just, I watched the audience, were very interested in what you had to say. What was it that you wanted to impart to the students and to the, to the future journalists of the world who are here today through your talk, mostly? What did at, you? At Stony Brook, we're weird in that we have a double mission, to train future journalists and to train future news consumers. So for instance, this course is taught out of the journalism school, but the vast majority of the students are not journalism students. They're engineering students or science students. Yeah, the whole point is to say, look, you, because of the way audience metrics are gathered, mm -hmm. the audience has an enormous power on what gets rewarded in the news environment. And so we're trying to teach students how to separate solid, reliable journalism with verification, and mm -hmm. independence, and accountability, all those three values in place, mm -hmm. from unreliable garbage. And how are, the, well then, how are the young ones, the, the young ones coming up, receiving that? I mean, because it seems to me that it would be intuitive for them to kind of group it all together. Um, uh, they, I think actually, because they are digital natives, because they are social media natives, I mean, they've grown up, mm -hmm. most of their sort of sentient life, right. they've been on social media. And they've started to observe some of the problems that we describe, and so when we give them a vocabulary, to uh, understand it when we give them a taxonomy to separate similar items that do have differences, um, they really respond. It's a, it's a really, um, it's a fun course to teach because the students are very engaged. That's incredible. And just, it's very interesting. I find what you do very fascinating because we are at sort of at this nexus of you know where we were versus where we're going, and, and no one seems to know. Jennifer Preston over at the New York Times made an interesting comment last week um, when I said to her that you know it's been said repeatedly and trumpeted that old media journalism is is on its deathbed mm -hmm. or you know suffering or lost. Right. She disagreed. Would you agree with that or disagree? Oh, I, she's exactly right. I mean, as a newspaper editor. Mm -hmm. Um, I spent a lot of time reading readership surveys and what I came away from them with was not that you need to pander to the audience. The audience most rewards organizations that give them information and the exact quote from the survey is, this organization is looking after my civic and personal interests. And so I took that to mean investigative reporting and we pushed investigative reporting at my little newspaper. And we were one of the few country papers in the country at that time, in the mid 2000s, that was growing circulation instead of losing. And it was while we were doing really controversial investigative reporting, and I think that there will always be a market for that. I think that's what people are the hungriest I agree. for. I agree. So it's just, you know, I think the, the interesting thing to me is that news executives have drawn a lot of the wrong uh, conclusions from the data that is available to them. It really is all about reporting, basic, okay. solid reporting. That's what citizens don't have the time to do for themselves. That's what they value in a news product. So then where does the citizen come in at with their reporting? How does it meet or support or work with the professional reporting? I don't think that citizen journalism is ever going to be a substitute for professional journalism. And it's not that I think there's anything wrong with citizens, mm -hmm. I just think they're busy. They've got jobs, <laughs> they've got, you yeah. know, whatever. Exactly. Um, I think that organizations that have learned how to harness that energy are doing great things. You know, I, it was, and I know I'm going to get this wrong, but I believe it was the Sunday Guardian mm -hmm. that got all the documents on the members of parliament using public money for private right. projects. So they, it was too much for the newsroom to, to consume. It was thousands of pages. So they put the whole thing up on the web. And then you'd log on and you'd say, I want to participate in reading these. 
and it would randomly give you 10 pages to read. And you'd go read those and say, wait, 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 he bought a duck pond? What is this? And so the citizens were eyes and ears. The journalists still applied the journalistic standards of verification, and they were, you know, some of those citizens probably had political motivations where the journalists were more sort of independent. There was more accountability. The journalists had to go back and say, oh yeah, he found, that's true, he found it. Or no, he misread that a little bit. But, so that's a great place for the citizen journalist, is as part of a group that's contributing something that's too big for an individual organization to take on. That is fascinating. So you're very hopeful then about journalism in the near future and digital very. media. Yeah. And I come at it from a different place. I mean, I'm very hopeful because I work with some of the journalism students. Mm -hmm. But most of the students I work with have no intention of being journalists. That's incredible. And every intention of being well-informed citizens. They may not be as informed as I want them to be, but the fact that they have the intention of that they're getting these skills mm -hmm. gives me a huge amount of hope for the country, but also for journalism. I mean, because if students are demanding this, again, you know, the metrics reward where people go, and so if, if our students are going out and they're demanding quality journalism, then that's a really secure future. For that's students. a great sign. That yeah. gives me yeah. hope. And speaking of students, I am going to let my camera person and uh, my intern, Jeremy, ask you a question he would like to engage Hi, Jeremy. In. Hi. Uh, so, yeah, I was wondering, um, with regards to the course, uh, what would obviously um, I, I understand what your intentions are with, uh, with with breeding the next generation of well-informed and well-engaged citizens. But in terms of what has happened so far, what would you say is like the most rewarding thing that you can uh, say to people in terms of a you know a ten a ten-word uh, buzz line or something in Twitter? You know, you say what's what's a great accomplishment? Great accomplishment of this course is a student who comes up to one of us, one of the professors, and this happens all the time, and says. I can't read the news quickly anymore. You've got me deconstructing every damn story. <laughs> to which we say, yes, that's great. <laughs> so that wasn't exactly a 10-word tweet. We'll Close break it, it down. That's what we do. We, we mm -hmm. will get it up there. Well, thank you. This conference has been great. Are you going to come back next year? I don't know. If they ask me. Well, you will, well, they'll ask you. I'm sure. You did <laughs> great. So it's important to have these conferences. So this is great. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching.